Welcome to this Killick Explains Finance video. This week, corporate actions. How do they affect shareholders and bondholders, and what kind of decisions might you have to make? So let's start with a definition from Investopedia. What is a corporate action? Any event, and that's important to note, any event that brings material change to a company and affects its stakeholders. Notice the word stakeholder there. So these are things which could affect both shareholders and or bond stroke debt holders. And some of them require you to make a decision. So let's take a look through and decide what kind of decision you might have to make. Now, common examples. This is not an exhaustive list, but very common examples on the left where an election or decision is needed include all of these. And we'll run through them one in turn in just a moment. On the right, typically situations where there is no election or decision required. In other words, non-elective events. Now, this can vary. When you get down the bottom here, sometimes these can be elective and the jargon used to describe them in the letter you receive might vary slightly too. But nonetheless, let's have a quick look at what these are and which decisions are involved on the left-hand side. So, starting there with the rights issue and the tender offer, which are two sides of the same coin, in a way, as with bonus issues and consolidations coming up later. So going straight in, a rights issue, a company offers new shares to its existing shareholders. So normally these will be at a discount to the current market price because the company wants you to buy the shares. So you can take up your rights. You get a letter, it'll give you some choices. You could buy the shares. That'll mean putting your hand in your pocket, coming up with more cash, buying the shares at a discount to the current market price. Or you could allow your rights to lapse, as it's called, and simply ignore the letter or you might be able to sell them on nil paid, or that may happen automatically. And that means you're basically selling your right to buy the shares slightly below the market price to somebody else for cash. Worth bearing in mind, there is a corporate action similar to this called an open offer, where essentially option three disappears from the table. So there's number one. There's lots more to know about rights issues. This is just an introduction. Number two, the tender offer. Sort of the opposite. Here, the company's trying to buy back shares from shareholders, usually at a premium. Why a premium? Because it wants you to take up the offer here. So, your choice is take up the offer and sell your shares back to the company, which could be potentially dilutive, depending on how many you're selling. Reject the offer and stay invested. But bear in mind that depending on the size of the offer, the remaining shares could lack influence in terms of voting rights compared to where you were before, and or become quite illiquid if lots of other people have given up their shares and given them back to the company. So quite a bit to weigh up, and an area where you might want to talk to somebody else first. Warrants. The right to buy shares in a company at a future date on specified terms. So normally a warrant will say there's a fixed price at which you can buy shares in the company at a future date, and if that fixed price is below the share price in the market at the point you exercise the warrant, you could make an almost immediate gain. So that could be handy. Normally they involve a very small number of shares for that reason. By exercising a warrant, you will end up owning more shares and you will have to pay whatever that warrant strike price is. You may elect to let the warrant lapse and simply not use it. Perhaps, for example, if the company's share price is below the warrant price, if you're just cheaper to buy shares in the market if you really want them, and it's a use it or lose it deal. So eventually the warrant will just run out of gas, at which point it goes in the bin. So again, things to weigh up as a shareholder there. Then you've got takeovers. A predator comes in and says, I want this company. Now the way to get control of a company is to take control of its shares. So you might get an offer to buy your shares either for cash or the predator might offer you shares in their business or a mixture of the two. So lots of science being summarized in one slide here. You can accept the offer in terms of basic choices. You can reject the offer. The predator might have to come back to the table with a better one, let's say. But it might become mandatory. And that's where a sufficient number of other shareholders say yes, you can be effectively forced out at the first offer price. So, things to weigh up there, things to talk about potentially. And finally, conversion on the left-hand side of my first slide. This is where debt holders have the right to convert debt into shares. Now, that could be attractive if you think there's more potential to earn from the shares than there is from fixed-term debt, if you like. So, often a choice of specified dates at which you can make the conversion. There might be a series of dates, and you have to choose one on which you're going to make the conversion. You may opt to convert. Failure to do so. So in other words, if you don't take the option to turn your debt into equity, could trigger a repayment by the company. So effectively, you're taken off the table because the company buys back your debt anyway. So again, lots to weigh up in terms of should I convert 
or should I allow the company to buy my debt back? Now, that's the left-hand side, a very quick tour of a lot of quite fiddly decisions in practice where elections are needed from you. Now, on the right-hand side, normally, I stress the word normally, no election is needed, although it can vary from company to company, situation to situation. So, bearing in mind that bonus issues and consolidations are kind of two sides of a similar coin, let's go in there first. So, bonus issues. A company wants to increase the number of shares in issue without raising any more capital and without changing the value of your portfolio. For that reason, it's not normally seen as requiring a decision from you. Uh, there is a situation where the company might offer you shares instead of a dividend, and that may require a decision. That's different. Consolidation, again, the company is simply raising the average price per share by taking shares out of the market, but not paying for them. So again, it shouldn't have a direct bearing on the value of your portfolio and or your voting rights per se. So, your voting rights are not normally affected, which makes it non-elective if you like. The value of your holding doesn't change, another reason why it's non-elective. And overall, this is something which normally just takes place as a matter of course. Not in every situation, but in many situations. Finally, repayments redemption. So a company may pay back capital to either bondholders and or shareholders. Now again, I've put this down as non-elective, but in fact, in certain situations, it may be elective, meaning you may have to make a decision or agree to something, because there could be a choice of the way the company is returning capital. It could be through capital, or it could be through something like a, a dividend, for example. If there's a choice, then yes, a decision may be required. And the terminology can also vary. Usually they're called this, but the letter you receive might use different jargon, so just watch out there. Now, you'll have noticed I've covered a lot of ground in a short space of time. There is loads more to know about rights issues, takeovers, conversions, and so on. If you'd like me to make some future videos on those topics, more than happy to do so. Please let me know, editor at killick.com. And if you'd like to watch videos on related topics, please go to our comprehensive library, killick.com forward slash learn.